In a recent video, I used this ultraviolet nail polish curing device to... Well, it was actually curing nail polish, but it was a thermochromic nail polish because it had other uses. And I also mentioned this can be used to develop circuit boards. And it's a very popular unit on eBay. It's called a Sun Mini UV LED nail lamp. And the price of these varies dramatically. You can get them from about £4, which is about 5 or £6 American dollars, up to about, uh, well, there's no upper limit. There's people who are clearly buying them and just marking the price up. And they claim these are rated 9 watts. I measured the power, 800 milliamps at 5 volts. It came to about 4 watts. So maybe there are other versions that uh, are higher output, or maybe they're just exaggerating the figures as so often happens. So it comes as a flat unit, and it's got the little fold-out feet. I mean, you can use it flat uh, with the cable connected and just use it as a little ultraviolet spot lamp. Or you can fold these uh, feet out and then it stands at a specific height above the bench. And in the case of the ladies wishing to cure the nail varnish, or indeed the gentlemen wishing to cure the nail varnish, uh, you're then supposed to put your fingers underneath and it's just the right height that, it, you know, uh, well, keeps it away from getting varnish all over the all over the front of the unit, I guess, really. I'm not an expert in such areas. But uh, the good thing about these is they're very cheap, they're mass-produced, and that makes them ideal for us to abuse for scientific purposes. So let's plug this in there. And uh, I'm going to plug it into a USB power bank because it is designed to run off a standard micro-USB connector. Oh, worth mentioning, it has, I'll just plug it into this power bank here, it has two modes, that, well, two modes that I know of. If you click the switch, just click it, it goes on, and click it again, it goes off. But if you click it and hold it until it goes on, it initiates a, a longer time delay, because just the, the one click in its own like that initiates a 45 second time. The long click and waiting for it to light up initiates a one minute curing time. I don't know if there's any other options here. I've not tried. No, I'm not, I'm not seeing much more. What happens if you just hold it in for ages? Is it going to start blinking and doing other stuff? Uh, no. I think that's all we're getting. Oh well. So what we're going to do now, before I open it up, we'll have a guess at what's inside beforehand. Just tuck that out the way to the back. Um, I'm going to bring in a piece of printed circuit board laminate and a piece of glass. And I've already coated this in the ultraviolet curing um, film, the dry film. And I've got some uh, transparencies here, so I'll just put it across like that. I shall put a piece of glass across it to weigh it down. And I shall straddle. It's not weighing it down enough, actually. That, that really needs clamp down because uh, you'll get a much better exposure if it is really pressed flat. This is why the... Uh, professional ultraviolet units tend to use foam to apply pressure to force the circuit board into contact with the glass. But uh, I'm going to put that over there, and I'm going to put the ultraviolet unit over it, straddle it right over, hopefully not nudge it, and then I'm going to turn it on for the one minute time. Okay, and while that's doing its little baking thing, I'll show you what's inside, because, well, not what's inside, I'll show you what's inside the LEDs. The LEDs are square, and if you look from the side profile, they've got a fairly pointed, rubbery dome in the front, and that dome is kind of loaded with phosphor. And if you look from the end, it takes up most of the space, the square, and there's a fairly large square chip in it, and a long, thinner chip with a couple of bonds. I could only see one bond coming onto this chip. I'm, I'm wonder if it's going through the substrate for the other one. And the gel covering, this sort of like the silicony covering uh, dome, is diffused with just a very light coating of phosphor. It's not like a yellow LED, which has a fairly dense ph phosphor coating. But um, when you actually look at it with uh, protective glasses on, round this chip you see quite an aura of brightness. It looks very, very white. That's all the beams are like me off it. But this one is just a slight fuzzy patch in the middle. So this one isn't really stimulating the phosphor as much. This one really is. So this one, I'm guessing maybe for a sort of visual effect, and that might be the ultraviolet chip doing the work. That has just finished its exposure. Shall we take a look at it? Was one minute long enough? 
It's fuzzy because uh, it's not been pressed down tight enough, but that shows that, you know, that is quite a good exposure. But I'd concentrate it more towards this area in the middle here, so I'd really have just done one, I think, and also really sandwich that down tight to get a good um, mating. But it's quite usable for exposing the uh, ultraviolet circuit board material. I'm guessing then that the inside of this, before I open up, and we will open it up right now, um, I'm guessing the inside is going to be the 8-pin chip with a switch. There's a say, there, there's, say that's the 5-volt rail and that's the 0-volt rail switch, or a push-button, should I say, on one pin. A couple of leads to that uh, mysterious 8-pin chip, which will almost certainly not have a number on it. The output of that will probably drive a single transistor, could be a FET. And then a wild guess that since each of these uh, LEDs has two chips in it, I wonder if they've all got their own resistor. It makes sense. They're only running about 130 milliamps per LED each. But uh, I could see a bus going to that transistor. Or could it be... I could be completely wrong. We'll only find out once I open it. Could it be that uh, they're using one resistor per ultraviolet chip and one resistor per blue chip? The only way to find out is to open up, but really it's not going to be complicated. I say this and with confidence, but having said that, I've not seen inside, so maybe it is going to be complicated. Let's bring it in and take it to bits. So there's no screws, so this is going to... Oh, I can actually see little clips there. I wonder if that's for holding the circuit board in. I'm going to spudge this at the risk of ruining the case completely and leaving it all ragged, as so many things are. Is it opening? It's not really opening very easily. It's kind of, it's parting, but it's springing back again. Oh, no, no. Ah, see how it's clipped together. I see how it goes. It's got those uh, pillars, friction fit pillars that often when you actually try and part it, it splits the plastic, it breaks the pillars, but we'll see if I get lucky this time. Not being into the cosmetic aspect of it, I don't care if I have to tape it or glue it back together again. <gasps> well, okay. I would say that it was the latter option because I can see a couple of big resistors. Actually, they're both in parallel. Uh... Here's the USB connector, and there's a decoupling. Oh, let's uh, let's have a wee zoom in on this because uh, let's uh, get closer and zoom in on it. Is that going to focus? I'm going to actually just make sure that has focused. I think that has focused. Yeah, it looks okay. So um, there's a little eight pin chip. Does it have a number on it? Am I going to be wasting my time looking at this to see if it's got a number on it? I shall look anyway. All right, let's share the moment. It's not got a number on it. Um, can I lift this whole thing out? Is, is it held down by these screws? Looks like it. I'm kind of intrigued by these LEDs, what they actually are. It's got these little spacers. Is this going to come out now? The LEDs are all just wired in parallel. So I'm guessing both those chips are just in parallel inside, which is odd because, well, one is potentially blue and one is ultraviolet. They might have slightly forward, different forward voltages. Or maybe they've just chosen them to match. Um, so we've got the uh, decoupling capacitor. The uh, sort of basically it's a small reservoir capacitor mounted close to the chip just to make it more stable. The uh, power line's more stable. They've actually got a, they've allowed couple here. Uh, the output is driving what might be a field effect transistor because there's unless they're relying on the current limiting of this chip to actually do that. It's called a. That is tiny. I'm going to have to go to the super microscope for this one. Well, not microscope, uh, magnifying glass. S2. Don't know if you can see that. 
S2. Um, we've got a 10k resistor, which is just pulling, a, I'm guessing it's maybe going to be a, a FET, in which case it's pulling the gate to the uh, negative rail, possibly. Um, and that turns on and then it's just that cluster of resistors and they've allowed for lots of resistors to be put in parallel. The value of those resistors is 1. Oh, one's 2 ohm and one's 1. 1.8. Let's uh, see if I can actually show you that. There's the 2 ohm one and 1.8, 1 R8 where they've used R as the decimal point. But they've allowed for a fairly large cluster of resistors there in parallel to limit the current out, so it is possibly designed to uh, drive the LEDs at much higher current. And then there's the button, and there's no pull-up resistor or anything. It's obviously using the internal pull-up and the chip. Um, and that is fundamentally it. It's exactly what I guessed was inside, albeit the cheaper version. So, um, useful little thing. Very handy as a little source of... Uh, let's uh, zoom back out here. Very handy as a little source of modestly high output ultraviolet LED that does the job of uh, curing ultraviolets of glues and resins and printed circuit board materials. So it's quite an interesting little thing. I shall put a link down below to my usual search on eBay, starting with cheapest including shipping first. Oh, I like the smear of the blue. This really is kind of having a, an effect on the camera there. I'm not seeing that to to the naked eye here. That is producing an interesting ultraviolet effect in the camera, isn't it? That's interesting. Uh, but I shall put a, a search link on ebay.com so that uh, you find the typical Chinese suppliers and the cost will be in the region of about um, four pounds upwards or whatever you want to pay really if you want to get it locally at a lower cost. Or should a higher cost, should I say? But uh, I've I've got this one quite quickly from China, it came through fast. But yeah, it's an interesting little thing. It's very neat, it's got lots of uses.